something, a commercial that is sensual or sexual, or the implication is for sensuality. Very hard to get through a program, any kind of programming. Very hard to get through any kind of program. Things that have nothing to do with any kind of uh, er erotic, uh, you know, sensual activity. Nothing to do with that. All of a sudden, you see things that are, you know, what, what does this have to do with the selling of, you know, cereal, right? Huh? Sensual pleasures. What else does that? What does that? What else does that mean? Uh, mean? Pornography. Vile things that. Uh, cause, arouse your your sexual desire for for someone other than your spouse, and remembering that that fornication is is a sexual behavior between two people that are not married to one another. Adultery, having relationships with anyone outside of your marriage, while you are still married to your spouse. any kind of those relationships at any time during your marriage, outside of your marriage, that's adultery. It's loving someone, and then it gets to the bottom line, right? And he says, vain amusements, we talked about this a little bit last week, you know, what's the difference between us and some of the Greeks and Romans who watch people being slaughtered in the, in the uh, uh, arenas? All we, the, the only difference is that we're sitting on the sofas watching it from our TV or in the movie theater. Vain amusements, uh, uh, inordinate affections toward uh, 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 game, gaming and videos and this and that and the other, all of that. Because the scripture says then finally it ends with more than and rather than lovers of God. All of that stuff in place of God. I asked a question last week about the percentage of time, you know, that you spend with God versus everything else. When you look at your day, you have 24 hours. Do you even, 10% of that, has it been spent with the Lord? In activities seeking the Lord, in activities worshiping the Lord, 10%, 2.4 2, 2 hours. In many cases, people don't spend more than two minutes, and sometimes two minutes is too long for some people. So all of this more than and rather than is suggesting that the, this deliberate choice not to love God, a deliberate choice not to worship God, a deliberate choice not to spend time with God. And if you say, well, no, no, you know, I don't deliver. Well, it's not deliberate. Well, are, are you deliberately choosing to? Do you remember some many week, many months ago, we talked about purposeful, purposeful activities. We're not uh, robots. No one's, you know, ha has programmed you. Well, <laughs> not in the, <laughs> not in the uh, traditional sense. Programmed you to to sit and watch TV eight hours a night. No one's programmed you to watch, you know, play videos six, seven, eight hours a day. No one's programmed. No one programmed you to that. I mean, not specifically in the traditional sense, right? You chose those activities. You chose those activities over and more over and rather than an activity that was loving, worshipful, and appreciative of God. In verse five, for although they hold a form of piety, a form of that true religion. This is a mini, and we talked about it last week, you know, they got the hat, the scarf, the earrings, the, you know, the Bible, the purse, the scarf, you know, all that sort of stuff, the robes, all the, you know, prayer shawls, you know, Bibles everywhere, crosses everywhere, all, all that kind of stuff in form of a true religion. Because what is religion after all? Just religion, basically, definitionally, is simply a practice of, of a certain activity. We don't want to just become rote, robotic practicers of an activity. We want to purposefully choose to love and worship the God, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The great I am, the almighty, Jehovah God, creator of the universe, that God. 
purposefully. Not just going through some motions. People go through the motions, they go in. And I've seen people, and, and <laughs> you know, just, just, you know, you just watch. You know, just look. Remember, if you've been in a church, people just go in, you know, you know, dip their hand in the holy water, slap it on the face, just go right in. Kneel, stand, kneel, stand, kneel, stand. You know, whatever the church is, same, same, same difference. Often people are just going through the motions. Some people go through. Some people are so bad that they go through the motions. They, they go to the church. They hear, you know, they hear they're there. And again, remember last week we talked about what 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 percentage of the of the church service is actually the delivery of the message of God, which is supposed to be the most important thing, right? We we talked about that being sometimes less than ten percent. Again. In that setting, that setting where it's supposedly, supposedly the purposeful worship of God. Some people drive miles and miles to get to a church to sit there and, and are frustrated that it lasts more than an hour and more more so want to get to the, uh, the, the social hall so they can have the coffee and donuts or whatever is being served. It's going to be a social club. They don't want to hear about the word of God. They don't want to hear the lessons being taught. And if anybody's really teaching the word of God, nobody talks about sin, nobody talks about hell, nobody really talks about heaven, nobody talks about, you know, being saved, sanctified, and and, uh, uh, and being on your way to see the Lord in the air. Well, that's what, that's what we hope for, and we want that. But most people are talking about a lot of other stuff that has nothing to do with building a relationship with the Lord on purpose, Right? And what does the scriptures continue to say? They deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. What is the it? To the power of the real religion that they were supposedly serving. Right? They deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. They con their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Here is another key thing tied to what I was saying before about our testimony, right? If you really, truly believe, appreciate, understand, and recognize the power of God, the fact that he is omnipresent, everywhere, everywhere present, that he is all superior to any thought or ways that we can, his ways and thoughts, right, are higher than ours. If you know this, appreciate, recognize, and have accepted this truly in your heart, then your behavior, amen, your conduct huh, would not suggest otherwise. If you always understood that God was sitting right next to you, would you talk the same way you talk? Would you walk the way you walk? Would you do think some of the things you might be thinking? Now, now, understand, I'm saying all this, and I'm well aware that I'm, 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 I'm a sinner as well, right? And we're all practicing, hopefully not practicing sin. We're practicing trying to be in right standing with the Lord. But the, the idea is that we want to challenge ourselves to, are we meeting the standards, even in our, even in our humanness, right? Are we, are, are, are we, meet, would you let yourself, let me, let me just ask you a question. If you were the guardian, the steward of heaven, would you let yourself in? Huh? Be truthful now. Be truthful. Be truthful. That's what we're talking about. Would you let yourself in? Does your conduct support what you believe about God? Does your, does your conduct and the words that you say, you know, a lot of people praise the Lord. Oh, God is good. God is great. God, is, you know, they, they, they say this. You can hear them saying it. You know, the, those people with the scarves and the hats and the pins, they say all of that. And then they go right out and they're fearful. They're trembling. They have no faith. They falter in the, in the first, at the first sign of any kind of distress. Or worse yet, they're not acting as if God is sitting right next to them. They're not acting as though they know God can hear what they're saying. They're not acting as though they know God can see what they're doing. That's what this means by they're strangers to the power of God. They're strangers because, because their conduct, 
does does not support what they profess. Amen. And the Bible says here in this same verse, avoid all such people. Turn away from them. For among them, verse 6, are those who worm their way into homes and captivate silly and weak-natured and spiritually dwarfed women loaded down with the burden of their sins and easily swayed and led away by their various evil desires and seductive impulses. Now, it says women here, and of course, the Bible is correct. I'm not disputing that, but I would suggest to you that this also happens with men. And please don't miss the words. It says in the scripture, in verse 5, at the end, the last clause, avoid all such people. All of what such people? All of such what people that were previously described, those who have a form of godliness, those who reject and deny and, and are strangers to the power of the Almighty God, those who uh, uh, are lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Who else? Those who are betrayers and treacherous and inflated with self-conceit. The, well, those who are uncontrolled, fierce haters of good. Who else? Those with loose morals and intemperate. Who else? Those who are false accusers and slanderers and troublemakers. You know, those instigators, the gossipers, the ones that go around telling stories and instigate things. You know, bring you news from somebody else and take news to somebody. Those kind of things. What else? Those who break truces and who do things for appeasement. Those who, who don't even admit when they're wrong and give an apology, ask for forgiveness. Amen? Those who are callous and inhuman, right? All of those folks. Those who are unholy and profane, ungrateful, disobedient to parents, blasphemous, scoffing, and abusive, contemptuous, arrogant, proud, desire for wealth, greedy, and, or and inordinate desires for wealth. Lovers of money, self-centered lovers of self. Those people, it says at the end of verse 5, avoid all those people. All such people turn away from them. For among them, among them, among all those that were described in the previous verses, are those who worm their way into homes, you know, the busybodies, bodies, right? And 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 the seducers, because it also says seducers here, the they were seduced of their evil desire. Did someone come in and sit down at your table and seduce you? Did someone come into your home while you were being silly and weak natured and spiritually dwarfed? Did someone come into your home while you were loaded down with the burdens of your own sin or the concerns of the world? Because how did they get in, right? We're asking the question, how does Satan get in? Oh, you know, it's very easy to, you know, turn away truth and turn away wise advice and turn away guidance and turn away the Lord and deny and reject the guidance of the, and the word of God. But when you have invited into your home some of these people that have wormed their way in, and we're talking about Satan sitting right down at the table. Amen. Come on. Don't, don't shout me down while I'm preaching. But, you know, I know you don't want to hear that you may have invited in Satan. That he may have come in and sat down at your table while you were whiling away in your, you know, supposed despair, while you were in being silly and weak natured, while you were not while you were not studying the word of God because you were spiritually dwarfed. Hmm? This is that thing where I was talking about. We sometimes we have, you know, we've brought things on ourselves. We don't want to admit it. But if we're truthful, if we really do some introspection and look within and see 
where did I, where did 